When asked what's the most important element in an Astro setup for visual observations, most will say that it's the telescope, and rightfully so. But in my opinion, the eyepiece is equally important, since I believe it doesn't matter how clean the light coming from the telescope is if the last element in the optical chain contaminates it with all sorts of aberrations. This is why in today's video we are going to take a deeper look at two of the most regarded eyepieces on the market, the Teleview Delos and the Bader Morpheus, both in their longest focal length configuration, 17.3 and 17.5 mm respectively. So grab a cup of coffee, because this is going to be a good one. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to another video review. One of the most recognizable brands, and for many the synonym with endgame gear, is the US-based company Teleview. It was founded by Al Nagler in the late 70s and has since been producing some of the best astronomy equipment for hobby astronomers. With its debut in 2011, the Delos series is a relatively young eyepiece to hit the market, but in spite of this it managed to gain popularity at a very fast pace. The series consists of 8 eyepieces with focal length ranging from 3.5 to 17.3 mm, while offering a constant apparent field of view of 72 degrees and 20 mm of eye relief. Similarly, Bader Planetarium, founded by Klaus Bader in 1966, also made a name for themselves by making quality their top priority. Their flagship IP series is the Morpheus, and it can be purchased in six different configurations, with focal lengths ranging from 4.5 to 17.5 mm. So, now that we know who the contenders are, let's put them side by side in a comparison match. Let's start with Teleview's Delos eyepiece. It arrived in typically Teleview fashion in this unassuming and simple black box. Inside we find the eyepiece featuring an unmistakably Teleview design. At the top we find a very large top lens surrounded by a simple rubber eye guard. Around the waist there are two rubber grip rings with the eyepiece markings in between. The top grip ring twists to allow for the top half of the housing to be extended. This functions as a very helpful eye guard since this way the top lens is lowered into the housing increasing the distance to the eye, making looking through it a bit more comfortable. Moving to the back or the nose piece of the eyepiece we can see threading for attaching one and a quarter inch filters. In general, the whole eyepiece feels very solid and very well made. There is no doubt that this eyepiece is as premium as they get. Switching over to the Morpheus, we start to notice some differences to the Delos. And this begins with the packaging. By contrast, Bader's packaging for the Morpheus is much more interesting. The fine pattern on the cardboard, the magnetic lid, and all the accessories inside convey the feeling that Bader really celebrates their top-of-the-line eyepiece. We need to keep in mind, however, that the Delos isn't Teleview's top-of-the-line eyepiece, so maybe that's one of the reasons why they kept it simple. Looking at the eyepiece itself, we see a lot of similarities to the Delos. Both feature a very wide top lens, a soft silicone eye guard and a wide rubber grip ring. Both are also similar in size and form factor, with the Morpheus being about 25% lighter than the Delos. The eye guard on the Morpheus is fixed, but they do include an M43 extension ring in the box and a flappy rubber eye guard that makes a big difference in terms of viewing comfort. More on this topic later in the video. The bottom part of the Morpheus is where another difference to the Delos can be found. 
Here the Morpheus features the possibility for connecting it directly to a 2-inch focuser adapter. This won't give you better views or anything, but it will save up about 21 mm of precious back focus. The build quality of the Morpheus is like just in the case of the Delos, top notch. It is a very solid and well put together eyepiece that on top is also compatible with the whole butter ecosystem of accessories, an aspect where the Delos can't really keep up. All right, so both eyepieces seem to represent some excellent top of the line options for hobby astronomers. But how good is the optical performance? After all, this is what's the most important aspect. But before we go on with the video, I just want to thank you for watching my videos. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do what I love, which is making more videos about astronomy. By liking and subscribing, you tell YouTube that these videos are interesting and this in turn helps the videos reach more astronomers. So thank you. All right, now let's see how good these two eyepieces really are. I've tested both of them in combination with a 4-inch f7 ED refractor and an 10-inch f4.7 Dobsonian telescope on nights with good seeing conditions from my backyard under Bortle 4 skies. So right from the get-go, both eyepieces struck me as being very similar in terms of optical quality. As you can see in these daytime shots, sharpness and brightness levels are more or less identical between the two. In the first shot, the Delos seems to be a tiny bit sharper across the entire field of view, but this changes in the second one. And this leads me to believe that atmospheric anomalies might be the cause for this variation. To the naked eye and during nighttime observations, both eyepieces are similarly sharp. In the second shot, you can also see that the views are almost without any optical aberrations. The colors are natural too. Here the Delos and the Morpheus are able to behave like any eyepiece should do, really. Being completely neutral and transparent without having an impact on the quality of the image delivered by the telescope. The same can be said about contrast as well. But here the Delos manages to inch out ahead of the Morpheus by the tiniest amount. This is best visible at night when observing the Great Orion Nebula or M42, for example, I was able to see a bit more detail in the structures uh, in the inner regions of the nebula when I had the Delos on. On the other side, when it comes to immersiveness, the Morpheus comes out ahead. With its noticeably wider apparent field of view, it gives me just a little bit more space to take in the whole beauty of larger DSOs like the Pleiades for example at once, without needing to pan around. This is what the difference of 4 degrees of apparent field of view looks like. Here it's also important to mention that the field of view of both eyepieces is not only sharp right up to the edge, but also very flat. There is no fishbowl effect present whatsoever when panning around. When pointing the telescope at the crescent moon, I wasn't able to notice any difference between the two, with both revealing amazing views with lots of fine details. In order to maximize the viewing experience with both eyepieces, I extended the eye guard of the Delos to about 80% and added the extension ring plus flappy eye guard to the Morpheus. This way I was able to almost eliminate any kidney beaning while greatly improving the viewing comfort. So both of these eyepieces are capable of delivering an almost flawless image quality while allowing for a very comfortable viewing experience. No matter the telescope you pair this with, you can be sure the light delivered by the telescope optics won't get compromised at all while refracted towards your eye. So which one should you pick? Well, seeing how similar both eyepieces are, you can't go wrong with either one of them. But there is one important aspect I haven't mentioned yet, and that's the price. You see, depending on where you live, the prices 
of these two eyepieces will vary dramatically. For instance, in the US, you can get the Delos for around 380 US dollars, while the same eyepiece costs almost 600 euros here in Europe. The price of the Morpheus varies just as much, but with this eyepiece it's exactly the opposite. It will cost you around 500 US dollars in the US and around 275-280 euros here in Europe. So my recommendation is not whether you should get either one of them, but rather to get the one which is more affordable in your region. Performance-wise, both are capable of delivering excellent views without any compromises, worthy of any Astro setup. So if your budget allows it, then definitely take these two eyepieces into consideration. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the Delos and the Morpheus eyepieces and about premium eyepieces in general. I'm very much looking forward to reading your opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.